Welcome back everybody, this is Brooklyn here. I want to uh, do a slightly different video today. Uh, I'm still going to do the ones where we do various builds, of course, especially using these mods. Uh, also, we'll be doing ones still that talk about the spells for each of these spell uh, classes, these different caster types that we're talking about, especially the ones that we're going to talk about here today. But I want to kind of give a kind of a background and a little bit of an explanation about why I'm doing these, these I don't know about tutorial videos, but uh, you know why I'm breaking down the, the spells uh, by level, by class, by... Uh, school, whether they have saving throws associated with them, whether they have spell resistance or not. I can kind of give you kind of a, a little history here as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, part of this is, you know, obviously I want to help you guys, but the other big part is I'm trying to help myself. Uh, it helps organize my thoughts uh, when I actually see stuff in video format because I'll go back and I'll watch my old content and always learn something new and, and, and you know, think of something in the past and then totally have it fall out of my head. And then I'll come back, watch the video and go, oh, why didn't I do that? Oh, yeah, that was a really good trick that I wanted to use. And it helps remind me. Uh, for instance, uh, we talk about War Priest already. And while we're not going to go over his spell book again, I wanted to show you when I look at their spells, especially for someone that's not a spontaneous caster who has access to everything. Uh, once he unlocks that level, he can pick whatever the hell he wants from that level. Um, I like going through their spells. I like finding out where they have ones with saving throws associated with them so I can kind of get a feel for what kind of character am I making. For instance, uh, a War Priest, which is what a Sacred Fist is, a specific type of War Priest. They're pretty good at um, things like Conjuration. They're also really good at things like Necromancy. There's a lot of Necromancy spells. So if you wanted a good Necro lore to build, a War Priest is a solid choice. And again, by studying those spells and then doing those videos, that helps flesh it out for me in a way that makes him a little more interesting to me. Uh, while he has a lot of good options, uh, he's not the only one that'd be really good at, at, at being a Necromancer. Hell, here's one right now. A Spiritualist, this is another class that I've yet to talk about. They have a really good spell book. Uh, they have a decent amount of conjuration spells, but again, necromancy is their cup of tea. And having said that, I made this one an undead actual character. As you can see, she has no con stat. So she can actually heal herself with her own goddamn inflict spells. Uh, she also has her own little spirit, hence the spiritualist. So this is a little mechanic that they have. They have their own little pet. Downside is this, the spirit is not considered undead for reasons that boggle my mind. Uh, so they actually get healed by cure spells. Um, but whatever, she has access to both, so I can just double dip I suppose uh, but I probably wouldn't do that for too long um, but again by studying her spells especially since she's a spontaneous caster and I really have to be kind of picky and choosy um, knowing that necromancy is kind of her thing I can get spell focused necromancy and really kind of shine and make sure that DC check lands right remember these are sub casters so it's even more important for me that they're really good at their DC check because we don't have the option of using level 7, 8 or 9 spells like a wizard, cleric, druid, sorcerer would do or which for that matter. Um, and the reason for that is, again, because I'm playing subcasters. And then and people would be like, well, just play a wizard. You know, play a sorcerer, a cleric, whatever. I don't like the high-level spells. It's, it's not that they're not good. Matter of fact, they're too good. Um, if I were to play in D&D, for instance, in pen and paper, uh, our campaigns, we rarely get to a level 20 build. Uh, level 12 is about as high as we usually get. I mean, we, there's been exceptions to the rule where, like, dust off an old character. And we said, hey, let's do, a, like, a one-and-done We'll take our level, you know, 10s, 11, 12s, or whatever that we have, rushing through this really awesome, big-ass campaign, and see who can survive long enough to get to, like, level 16 or 20 or whatever. And we'll do it, but it routinely becomes, when you get those level 7, 8, 9 spells, it routinely becomes a, oh, summon this, and I do that, and I kill this guy, and move on to the next one. Summon this, do that, kill this guy, and that's all we do is rinse, repeat, same thing. It becomes... Um, either too hard uh, a content where we just can't win without some serious fudging or so easy that we roll stomp over everything which again is very similar to this game on the highest difficulty you almost need those level seven eight nine spells you don't have to uh, again i like my subcasters for another reason not only do they have some challenge in the fact that i gotta be picky with my spells but usually the subcasters are all pretty decent fighter types they're not as good as a fighter in almost every instance but by and large, they can hold on their own, you know. So if I run out of spells or if I just want to buff up and go to town, I have that option. Here's a fine example of some fun that you can have. Again, while the War Priest or level 6 makes a good Necromancer, you notice that the spell that's missing from this list, while they have one death to death, harm, uh, mass inflict moderate wounds, and uh, the other one go. There's another one where you go, bastard. Oh, he doesn't have Circle of Death. I thought he did. Okay, so I guess it's just... Oh, there's Plague Storm. He has Plague Storm. So he has a variety of decent necromancy spells for level 6, but look at this one. For level 6, I picked uh, several from her. 
she has created undead, something that normally you can't get at level six, but because she's a spiritualist, she can. Almost strike another fine example, one that I think the wizard gets that at level seven, but a magus and of course a spiritualist apparently get this at level six, and again that that's cool to me. So again, I kind of like uh, limited spell lists, and I really like that I, I have to pick a theme to run with a character. Uh, to be real clear on this, and again, this kind of goes towards my building uh, philosophy, if you will. Um, I don't min max. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys that do have already seen my videos and kind of laughed at the fact that my cares are usually subpar. They're subpar for a couple of reasons. One, because I don't usually find min maxing to be all that fun. Uh, it's not to say that I don't try to make a good build. I would never post a build that I think is crap. Uh, but uh, it depends on what we're doing with that build. Is it running solo? Then it better be good. If it's running on a team, I can kind of be a little stupid with some of my picks. Let me give you a for an instance. Uh, I talked about uh, Elder Science for so goddamn long. It's my favorite build or class. Um, I love the spontaneous casting. I love that um, uh, they, they have the various bloodlines. Uh, my favorite bloodline being the Arcane bloodline, and that's for a reason. Uh, one, they get a, a bonus to the DC check, so you can really make a solid DC build for an Arcane bloodline. Fucking amazing, especially when you throw in spell focus and greater spell focus. An elemental focus and greater elemental focus on top of that shit. If you want to be a good fire evoker, you can fucking crush some shit as Magus, as an Elder Scion. More than that, though, with that arcane bloodline, uh, you can get some uh, fun with metamagics. Get a bonus to your DC check because of that. And the best part of the arcane bloodline, you can get nine free spells. And what does that mean? Well, it means as you level up, you get a free spell and a free spell, another free spell, and then at level 19, you get six free spells. And those spells come from the wizard spell list. And that wizard spell list is more inclusive than the Magus spell list. So again, we had spells that you didn't have access to before. Like resist energy, protection from energy, some buffs. Also, all the enchantments, level 1 through 6, of course. All the illusions that you were missing out on. Not many, but there's extra ones in there. Especially with these mods. You can make yourself a solid illusionist builder, an enchantment build. And normally you wouldn't be able to do that with a Magus. So that's kind of cool. Uh, but... I'll give you a, that, that Fire Evoker, for instance, again. If I wanted to have a really good hard-hitting character, Fire and Evocation would be probably the biggest uh, draws for me. So Elemental Focus, Greater Elemental Focus, Fire, and then uh, Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus for Evocation in that uh, Arcane Bloodline and get like one Meta Magic feat from that probably Intensify, and I'll be crushing shit with a massive DC check. But I would even go one further uh, for a pen and paper version of that game for that character. I'd probably go to my DM and I'd say, you know, I'm going to make this Elder Sign, this Arcane Bloodline Elder Sign. He's like, yeah, that's cool. I think I'm going to make him an Evoker. Well, that makes sense. Well, I'm going to make him a Fire Evoker. Yeah, again, that makes sense. But I think I'm going to take every Evocation spell. Wait, what do you mean? Like, I'm going to take all the Evocations. Goes, well, yeah, you, you're an Evoker. I'm like, no, I mean with those nine free spells, there's some Evocation spells you don't have access to without those free nine spells. On the vanilla version of the game, you can't do it with those, these mods because there's just too many spells added now. But with the vanilla version of the game, I made an, a Fire Evoker build that I was quite proud of. With really nice DC checks. And I took every, and I mean every, evocation spell that they had access to, level 0 through 6. So if a wizard had access to it, and a magus had access to it, it was in my spell book. Now, would I do that if I was min-maxing? No. Why? Because there's some evocation spells that are just not that good. A uh, fine example for level 2 spell. Uh, Burning Arc is nice, but Molten Orb is a piece of shit. It's a fireball that you chuck. It only does like 2d6 of damage. And then it has an AoE chance to it. which is like 1d6 of damage that went around them. I think it might set someone on fire. But by and large, it's a piece of shit. And it can miss. Fuck that. Burning Arc is way better. And that's also available at level 2. So again, you can see... Why would you pick that then, Brother Mean? Again, for theme. And I know that sounds silly. But I'd like to have a, a, a history, if you will. Or a, a backstory for a character. A fine example for that Fire Evoker wasn't that they were like all about the fire or the evocation it's they consider themselves a, a teacher so that fire evoker probably lends out his or her talents to like the local wizarding school maybe like junior college level or you know even like a, a bachelor's level magic you know, they teach evocation and why would they hire someone that's a spontaneous caster that's just silly they would hire a wizard clearly right because the wizards can do whatever they want in their spell book yes but if you're teaching a specific course like evocation 101 well, I have access to every one of those evocation spells, level 0 to 6. Well, you don't have the 7 or 9. Yeah, that's like college-level studies for, like, PhD and shit like that, master's-level work. So, again, I teach the low-level students. Someone else will teach the higher-level students. I have no problem with that. 
And again, this is how I would build a character in my head. I would look at it and say, well, this, this would be an interesting mechanic for me. Same with like my Necrolord that I have here. You know, what's her backstory? Well, maybe she was raised from the dead. She didn't want to be a lich, uh, but she is one now and she has a, a connection. Uh, maybe she murdered uh, the person that turned her into a lich. That's her little fucking spirit here, her little spirit buddy. So there's this constant give and take between the two of them. One's keeping her alive. She's keeping it alive by healing it periodically. And by and large, they're there to help each other to kind of get through this undead existence. But by and large, I'd have a, a backstory for them. So again, knowing that she's a necromancer, that makes sense to me. Same with the Conjurer here, a nice summoner build. The summoners are not only awesome because they have a, a, an arcane casting. If you, if you doubt that, look for spell failure. If you see spell failure chance 0% or any percent for that matter, they're an arcane spell uh, caster. This it means that the summoner is capable of actually using uh, Dragon Disciple if you wanted to dip into it. They don't have many uh, elemental spells. Like There's a few, like one or two like cold spells like Snowball here. More uh, acid spells than anything. So I'd probably, if I were to take the summer four level dip into like Dragon Disciple, I'd probably make it like a Black Dragon or a, a, with a bronze or copper, or whatever the fuck it is, Acid Dragon from the metallic side of things to get that extra strength. And again, I wouldn't make the character like I've made her right now where she's more dex than she is anything else. I mean, it's obviously charismatic because that's her casting stat. I'd probably shift around the decks with the intel uh, the strength. Get the Asimer build that literally capitalizes on strength and charisma. Get that to a 16 up here. Why? If I do the 4 level dip in Dragon Disciple, I know that doesn't give me another 4 points of strength. So that 16 finishes off at a nice meaty 20. And if she's a summoner and she has her own pet, they call them Eidolons, how does she control that Eidolon? Well, obviously charisma, but also maybe brute force. Maybe she's abusive to it. You know, she whips the damn thing or whatever, and that's part of her backstory. So she's chaotic evil, let's just say. Uh, remember, just because she's an ace winner doesn't mean that she's a good person. You know, this one's chaotic neutral. So maybe that's my shtick. That's how I build the character. And again, by knowing her spells, by dipping, like I've done in those various videos and the videos still to come, I know that she's going to have a lot of conjuration spells here, or spell-like abilities. And I know by looking at her actual spell list that she has a lot of good conjuration spells that I can capitalize on, even ones that don't have saves like Corrosive Touch or Scary Mist, I still want them. And again, it helps drive my purpose of what's this character's story. What would she do? It's not min-maxing. You know, still make sure that she's a solid character, that she's tough, she's strong or dexterous, and has her armor and, and has, a, you know, a, a way to protect herself and, you know, enhance her pet, enhance herself, and all those things are still going to be applicable. But it kind of helps drive my story. Another example, here's a Blood Rager. If you never played one of these, these are super fun. They only have level 1 through 4 spells. They don't even get cantrips. But the Blood Ranger is interesting to me uh, because when I looked at their spell list, two things stuck out. If I wanted to make an evoker build, this is a decent evoker. It doesn't have many evocation spells because they've got limited to 1 through 4. But you see I have Burning Hands, your Piercing Stream, both of those have saves. Uh, I have uh, nothing here that has a saving throw. Every last thing here literally is going to hit and does damage, period. Um, Vine Strike has the same throw, but I mean as far as evocation spells. Uh, but notice that Fireball's here. I didn't take Lightning Bolt. Uh, and part of that was because he's a, a gold dragon, because I did the Draconic Bloodline dip to get his strength higher higher, hence my lower caster level. But that means that I do extra damage with my fire spells, and fire was what evocation is usually all about. So a 10d6 of damage spell can certainly uh, be good damage, but now with me being a gold dragon type, that turns into 10d6 plus 10. If I use an intensive 5 minute magic rod, that turns that into 15 d6 plus 15. That's some decent damage. 30 on the bare minimum is impressive still to me, especially AoE style. And then there's more still. Dragon's Breath, and again, some of that can be fire. It could be acid, electric, cold, but usually fire. And 12 d6 is 12 d6 plus 12. Or, if I intensify it, 17 d6 plus 17. There's gear out there that will increase my fire potential as well. And I can turn that 17d6 plus 17 into 17d6 17 17 plus 34, or, let's see, 44, 51. It might even be able to get the tiniest bit higher than that. And that's a lot of minimum damage. Rolling all ones and you're still doing well over 60 damage, that's pretty impressive. And again, that helps drive my story. What is this character doing? What is he known for? The burning veins of fire, you know, his wall of fire, his dragon's breath, you know, hell, even fire shield, he'd probably capitalize on some of that and give him some protection besides. So again, build towards a type. That doesn't mean I am a complete idiot. I mean, I got stone skin for a reason. I got fear for a reason. 
I got countless eyes and fly, channel bigger for obvious buffs for myself. Make sure I'm protected. And again, he will be a strong uh, character. For instance, if you look at what he's known for, strength, con, and charisma being his big three stats, con for his ability to rage, strength for his ability to hit like a brick goddamn shithouse, and his charisma for casting stat as well as influencing his people. Remember, this is if this is your main character, this is a solid, solid character. I don't have much of the way skill points, but I got the ones that matter to me, perception and persuasion. Those are the two biggies. If you don't have those, I don't know what the fuck you're doing with yourself. Because if you're the main character and you can't perceive shit and you, you find all that cool hidden loot and the traps and shit like that, and then that sucks. And if you can't persuade your people to fuck kiss your ass or fuck off when they're annoying the shit out of you, then you're going to be terrible at running this game. So those two are the two main skills that I almost always will invest in. Now, I don't have to go crazy in it, but I did. I got 16 ranks in that one, and I got 20 ranks in perception because I almost always max that one out. And I got a little bit of mobility here. Just enough to be able to fight defensively if I wanted to. Athletics is looking really good, though, and I did that because, again, I'm a strength-based build. And again, this is why I build these characters this way. It's not min-max. It's not perfect. There's going to be better ways to do it. And hell, the fact that he went crane-style should tell you that it was probably not the best idea. I did that for protection. I don't have to do protection if he's going to be protected with his spells and his teammates helping him out. Instead of crane-style, I could have done something like... Um, well, let's see, what's the... I hear the War Priest has him. What are those other styles called? Dragon style, dragon ferocity, dragon roar is uh, in the vanilla version of the game. But now they have pummeling style, they got jabbing style, Lenorm style. So there's a variety of different martial arts styles in the game that you could have picked from. And I just went with Crane because again, I know what it'll do. It'll make me tough, and it'll make me uh, uh, armored up. And again, it doesn't look like it right now. But uh, when you fight defensively, you're getting a plus three. Uh, with my crane style, uh, I get another plus one, so that goes up to another plus four. Uh, the fighting defensively penalty drops from a minus four to a minus two. Uh, when I get the crane wing, and get even more dodge. Uh, when I get crane repost, uh, that minus two penalty now drops to a minus one. It's totally serviceable at that point, so that's really nice. And serves the dual purpose of when somebody tries to fucking hit you. Whether they hit you or not, but if they miss you by a very close margin, you'll punch them in the snoot. Fucking awesome. And I still like the crane style, crane wing, crane repost. Doesn't mean it's the best way to make it. Dragon was a pretty good one, but I did that for this guy. Why? Again, he's also a strength-based build. And high wisdom. And the Sacred Fist, more priest, a specific kind, they get an improved unarmed strike. They get monk abilities. Hell, I got dragon style here, dragon roar... And you may think that Dragon Roar is shit, and it really kind of is, but look what it does. You're using your Stunning Fist, which I had to pick up because I don't think I got it for free. I had to buy it. Yeah, right here. Um, get Stunning Fist. Uh, you use your Stunning Fist up to actually uh, roar. So uh, you use like two uses, I think, to, to do a big roar. It's a narrow cone, 15-foot cone. But it does your um, unarmed uh, strike damage to everyone within that cone, and they shake in the target, right? Which is, of course, of value to me. But you may say, well, but your unarmed strikes are pretty much shit, right? I mean, like most people punch for like 1d4 or 1d6 of damage. Who gives a shit if you're roaring for 1d6 of damage? Well, look again for the Sacred Fist and find out that not only does it get improved unarmed strike, but his strikes actually get better over time right here. And again, without playing the character, you wouldn't know this. Start at level 1, you get that crappy 1d6 for 3 levels. Then it jumps up to 1d8. I'm going to take him as a purist. He can finish this at a solid 2d10. See that over here? Plus 12. And again, all that should be added to that goddamn roar. And that's not bad for literally just screaming at some people because I don't believe there's a saving throw uh, for sh ignoring the damage. It just ignores the shaken effect. So they still are going to take the damage, which is pretty freaking cool. And it gives me a reason to use that stunning fist of blue, which I don't give a rat's ass about normally anyway. And again, this isn't by all means optimized. Dragon um, style and dragon ferocity are useful, though, for a strength-based build. Look what it does. Uh, you get all these bonuses here, but look at this. Further, you can add 1.5 times your strength bonus. So plus 4, you get plus 6 um, on your damage for the first first punch. And again, we've got five goddamn punches. That's not that impressive, Brother Mune. But then keep reading when you go over here to dragon ferocity. Uh, increase your strength bonus for unarmed strike rolls for that first punch to double. So instead of plus 4 going to plus 6, it's plus 4 jumping up to plus 8 damage. 
And again, that's not leaps and bounds amazing, but it's four more points of damage. And again, we're not buffed yet. He can buff his strength a variety of different ways. And keep reading. Every other attack now. So this one, this one, this one, and this one get 1.5 times your strength. So again, they get the plus six. So again, you see the appeal. And again, it gets magnified on a critical hit. Again, pretty goddamn cool. Got some really fun stuff that you can do with these builds. If you look at the spells, if you look at their uh, effects, if you know what schools you might, might, you don't have to, but might want to invest in. Again, Spiritualist did great for the Necromancy. Summoner made a really good Conjurer build. Uh, the Blood Conduit, uh, the Blood Rager in general, I should say, makes a really good Evoker or Necromancer. Uh, and for the Wild, uh, or sorry, the Hunter, the Feral Hunter in this particular case, but the Hunter, they had really good uh, Evocation, Conjuration, and as a third alternate, which is the way I took this one, Transmuter build. Plenty of spells, decent amount, and I didn't have a Transmuter yet. I thought it was going to be the Alchemist. And I looked at the fact that, well, I'm going into Wild Shapes, why I picked the Feral Hunter subclass so I could get the Wild Shape, so I feel like a spontaneously casting Druid, which is what this character is going to feel like to me. I still get my summons, and I don't care that they're not buffed. And with, like, uh, Spell Focus Conjuration and Augmented Summoning, Superior Summoning, yeah, I could still do that. But I'm like, you know what, I like the Transmuter idea. I'm changing shape, and Transmutation is the key, boys. Transmutation is the key. And again... I will have fun with this character. Is it optimized? No. Is it fun? Hell yeah. And again, this isn't the build. This is just me fuddling around just to see what I can do with it. But this would make a solid transmuter build. The Alchemist is the only one on this entire list that was kind of surprise for being shit. So I defaulted to my uh, typical setting. He's great at bombs. Come up better DC bonus to all his bombs. Why not? That's just going to steadily get better as I get more intelligent. And again, I just constantly pushed his intelligence. So again, really good intelligence check, really good bonus to your DC check from here. And I have a really good uh, couple pieces of gear in the game that you can get that increases the DC checks of your bombs as well. So that's a nice upgrade for him. And I got the typical fire bombs, I got acid bombs, force bombs, I got blinding bombs, and I got holy bombs. And I could have grabbed different kinds. There's other ones in these. Curse bombs and tangle foot bombs. And there's all kinds of weird shit out there. So again, could have gone any number of ways with this character. He still has a spell book. He still will buff himself up and heal his team or whatever he needs to do. But by and large, he's all about the bombage. And again, I got no problem with that. But once you look at the spell book and you realize what he or she's capable of doing, that really kind of drives the character. So I hope this makes sense for you guys. And again, I, I know that I'm wasting your time. I'm not showing you a build or spells. But I, I really do think this is a, a, a good time to explain why I'm doing the videos that I'm doing. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. Uh, and know that I always appreciate criticism, especially constructive criticism. Less so when people are telling me that I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, usually I just assume that you're the fucking idiot. But it's one of those things. Uh, I at least will look at your advice if you post any. And I will correct you if I find that you are wrong or if I still believe that you're wrong. I mean, there have been times where I have been mistaken. It happens. And I do apologize if I'm giving you wrong information. But uh, I had someone, for example, tell me about... Um, Use magic device is useful uh, because it allows you to use gear, for example, like say you're a lawful good character, but you get a piece of gear that only like lawful evil can wear. If you have used magic device, you can use that gear. No, you can't. Not in this game. Now, unless you have a mod that changes that, which might be a thing, um, there is no way to do that. And again, the game will specifically tell you, nope, that's only for a paladin. And you will not be able to put that on if you're not a paladin. Just because you have a used magic device that's through the fucking roof, that's not how it works in this game, on the computer version. On pen and paper, it probably does. I mean, because I remember that does for, like, D&D. That's one of the reasons that Use Magic Device was so popular with uh, rogues, right? So they could actually use shit that rogues were never supposed to be able to use. Suddenly, they're using wands and rods and all kinds of fucking shit that they should never touch. But because they're Use Magic Devices through the roof, now they can do that shit. I totally get it. But you're confusing pen and paper with the computer game. And again, I just don't want to have people getting confused with why I'm doing certain things. Again, criticism is always appreciated. Constructive criticism is greatly appreciated. And I'll happily have a dialogue with people about how to make a build or what I think about a specific spell or class or a team composition. Feel free to post that down below. I would never shy away from talking. That's obvious, I'd say. Uh, but with that, uh, know that the next video I'll probably oh, will be on the Blood Rager uh, simply because his spells are going to be very similar, if not identical, to the Magus level 1, 2, 3, and 4 spell. There might be like one or two differences, 
and there may be a difference in the way I tackle the spell. Since, again, A, spontaneous caster, that's a big difference. B, uh, some spells are just inherently good. You know, like if, uh, maybe not for this blood conduit, but if I wanted to have a good reach, and large person is a solid spell. I'm stronger, I do more damage, and I have a better reach because I'm bigger. Yes, I have a worse dexterity. Yes, it's harder for me to hit things. Yes, it's easier for them to hit me. Those are all penalties. But if I'm going for a reach build, something where I'm literally sh uh, reaching farther with my, um, say, glaive or great axe or yeah, long spear or whatever, enlarged person is a great spell. Now, I'm not saying that it would be the one for this guy, but it emphasizes my point. There's going to be times where I say, this would be a terrible spell, but for a magus. This would be a great spell for this guy. So again, grain of salt with some of these things. So I will revisit them, uh, like I said, and I will kind of rehash my take for a Blood Rager in general. Uh, and again, there's so many subclasses of Blood Rager like this Blood Conduit, where things are just still unknown to me because there's just too many classes for me to cover and subclasses for me to cover. So if I'm, you know, like I misspeak or I say, oh, you know, like I said with the War Priest with his... Um, Ability to use Stunning Barrier. As a standard action, that sucks. But again, when he has the ability to do this and activate it as a swift action 15 times a day, that's an amazing spell suddenly, though. Maybe not this particular one, but you know, I could go for the bigger version, the greater version, Stunning Barrier. And again, knowing those tricks, knowing that he has access to those spells. Which spells are the uh, personal effect spells, like uh, Divine Power, like uh, Deadly Juggernaut, knowing that shit in advance, and that he has the ability to instantly activate those little bastards. That comes in real handy. So hopefully, like I said, this will help explain why I do what I do. Uh, and again, like I said, unless I get better advice, chances are the next video you're going to see from me is going to be the Blood Rager. Uh, I'll probably do it, if I can, all in one shot, so it means I'm covering the spells level 1, 2, 3, and 4. Because again, it is a lot of revamp. Um, from there, I have no preference, so if you guys want to you know, chime in and say, hey, do an alchemist next, or do the uh, spiritualist, or maybe you'll tell me that you guys really like the summoner, or even the ones I didn't pick here, like the inquisitor or the investigator, I'm happy to do, you know, elder scoundrel, I'm happy to do paladins and rangers, bards and skalds, they're all in there, and I'm going to do subclasses well before I do the wizards, the druids, the clerics, the sorcerers, the witches, Oh, I think there's no one in there that I'm forgetting that's a level 7, 8, 9 casting, son of a bitch. Uh, but again, I'll do those at the end for obvious reasons. I'm kind of building, if you will, on the spell lists. But with that, my name is Brett. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Hopefully this guy uh, explains to you what I'm trying to do here and you guys approve. But with that, I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.